I am Brother Stephen Elabo, welcoming you to the Life Bible Church, Charlottesville, United States, a place where the undiluted Word of God is being preached. You are about to listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, as a comfort to share the mind of God with you and your family. I want you to be ready to pick up your pen and your paper and jot down important messages as they will do you good. God bless you and remain blessed. The word of God upon your life tonight. Ah, you, you lost an amen over there. I'm looking at Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm reading to you from verse 4. You know, when you look at Hebrews chapter 11, and as you open it from verse 1, it says, Now face. That's what now that tells us at this time on this day and for you over there faith is going to work in your life there are some things that come and go there are some things you saw last time you don't see them today there are some things old people spoke about and your people don't speak about you today there are some things old men spoke about. The patriarchs of old. The people of old. The prophets of old. And the people that had problems in the past. There were things they spoke about. You don't talk about them anymore. But there is something peculiar about faith. It was at that time. And it is at that at oh, this time oh, see, too, see, be, bad, and it will be there tomorrow no, see, why, be, no, that's no, why it says now face and then it says face is oh, it is not was it used to be and it is no more it says now face and today faith will come in your heart because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and when that faith arrives somebody there that faith will arrive somebody there that faith will come and somebody there the faith will pierce your life it will come in your soul it will come in your mind it will come in your spirit and when that faith arrives something you never saw before something you never experienced before it will happen tonight somebody there said it will happen tonight because faith is it is the substance of things hoped for and it is the evidence of things not seen and it is the faith I am talking about tonight come to us for now by faith Abel that's enough by faith Abel selling us whatever Abel became and whatever you are going to become it's going to be by faith not by unbelief not by doubt not by crying not by rolling on the ground by faith Abel and by you tonight Abel if you are going to have faith and that faith will work in a dynamic way in your life. And then it comes, it goes on and on and on and on. And it comes to verse 39. And it says, all these having obtained a good report through faith. 
It's coming from the very beginning. And he talks about faith. And it comes to the very end. And he says, everyone, and anyone, the problems are going to be solved. If the power is going to come, if the sickness is going to be healed, if miracle is going to come, if salvation is going to come to your soul, if you are going to receive the blessing of heaven, it begins by faith. It goes on by faith. And it ends by faith. I want to talk to you tonight. And after the talk, we will pray. I will pray. You will pray. We will pray. And my prayer, your prayer, when they come together, there will be an explosion of miracle. I'm talking on the wonders of faith. The wonders of faith. You know, if you're looking for signs and wonders, it's based on faith. If you're looking for the supernatural, it's based on faith. If we're looking for problems to be solved, it's based on faith. If you're waiting for salvation, it's based on faith. On faith. If you are waiting for the supernatural encounter, it's based on faith. If you are waiting for the broom of heaven to come and sweep away all the cobweb of the devil in your life, in your family, it's by faith. And it says, by faith. Abel. As we talk about faith, faith in Christ. As we talk about faith, faith in the blood of the Lamb. As we talk about faith, faith in the name of Jesus. The name above every name. The name above your cancer. The name above your tuberculosis. The name above your deafness. The name above your paralysis. The name above the yoke in your life. The name above the problem in your life. Every curse is cancelled tonight from your life. There in the name of Jesus, the name that works wonders, the name that saves, the name that heals, and the faith that delivers, and the faith that sets you free, faith in Christ, faith in his blood, faith in his name, we look up to him. You see, Christ is central. Look up here. And you look at Christ standing here. This one, this side, you're looking towards Christ. And those who are on this side, they're looking directly at Christ. And those who are on this side, they're looking in this direction with Christ. What does that mean? What it means is this. Christ came before he came the people who are over here like Abel like Abraham like Sarah like Joseph like Caleb like Joshua they were looking at this side looking at the Christ who is to come how did they know he was coming because God said the siege of the woman referring to Christ will bruise the head of the devil and so over here from generation towards a child is born 
because a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He will be called Emmanuel. That's all these people here looking to him here. And then he came. He was born in Bethlehem. He came. He was raised in Nazareth. He came. He went throughout Galilee. He came. And he went to Capernaum. And the people that were living at the time when he came, they were looking at him directly. Those people over there, before Christ came, expectation. They were expecting. And they were looking at him afar off. At the time when he came, they saw him face to face. They touched him. He touched them. He opened their blind eyes. He raised the dead. He healed the sick. He forgave their sins. Experience. Those other people here, before Christ came, they looked up to him in expectation. The people that lived at the time he came, they had experience. He died. Oku. He was buried. He rose again. He went to heaven. Before he went to heaven, he says, I give my name unto you. Now whatsoever you ask him that name and you ask the father he will do it for you. Now he is gone. We are the people on this side we turn around and we're looking at him now. What do we look for? Remember the people who were on this side yesterday expectation the people who were directly when he came to the world today that's experience and the people that on the side were living after he has died and were living after he was buried were living after he rose from the dead were living after he went to heaven we live on his name. We live on his power. We live on his authority. But we're looking from this side and looking at him because he died 2,000 years ago. Exploits. Exploits. Now we're going to have exploits today. Expectation from that side. Experience from this side. Exploits from the other side. That's why the Bible says in it. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday. Those people today, these people, and tomorrow is forever the same. And what you did before is going to be your life today. You are in for a miracle. There's no way you can escape miracles tonight. Miracle coming your way. Miracle coming to your side. Because we're talking about the wonders of Faith. The wonders of faith from Abel to Zacchaeus. The wonders of faith from Abel, that's A, to Zacchaeus, that's Z. From the very beginning to the very end. And well, whoever you are tonight, I shall so hear the word of God. And faith comes back to your life. Congratulations, a miracle is coming your way. Number one, I'm going to divide the message to three parts. Number one, the redemptive faith of Abel. 
The redemptive phase of Abel. Number two. The restorative phase of all others. The restorative phase of all others. You are there. Restoration has come. You are there. The peace of God has come. Whatever you have lost. And you are wondering. Look at my life. Look at the sorrow. Look at the problem. Joy has come. I said joy has come. Where's the person I'm talking about and, there? And you will rejoice tonight. The restorative phase of all others. Number three, the regenerative phase of Zacchaeus. From Abel to Zacchaeus. Number one, we're looking at the redemptive phase of Abel. I'm reading to you once again from Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. And which obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by each he been dead, yet speaketh. Now you remember Adam and Eve. You remember God created them. Adam did not have a father or a mother as lay here. Eve did not have father, mother on the earth over here. They were not born like you were born. They didn't arrive into the world like you arrived in the world. But all the other people that came into the world, everybody that arrived in the world was born of a woman. Cain was born of a woman. Abel was born of a woman. There is something peculiar about anybody that is born of a woman. Abel, Abel, Cain, Cain, yourself, myself, everybody in the world, the white, the black, the brown, Africans, Asians, Americans, America, Asia. Everybody. Except Adam and Eve. What's the peculiarity? Of anyone that is born of a woman. We're looking at Psalm 51. As you look at Psalm 51. I'm reading at verse 5. Psalm 51. Verse 5. And you see the peculiarity. It says in this Psalm 51 verse 5. Behold. I was shaped in iniquity. And in seed did my mother conceive me. You think a hey, fabel, you think about yourself. I was shaped in iniquity. Adam and Eve had fallen. Adam and Eve had sinned. Adam and Eve had disobeyed Adam and Eve had disobeyed God. Adam and Eve had disobeyed Adam and Eve came out of the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve were excommunicated out of the Garden of Eden. It was in exile outside the Garden that Cain was born, that Abel was born outside the Garden of Eden. That's where you were born. And because of that peculiarity, it says, I was shaped in iniquity. And you see, did my mother conceive me? In Psalm 58, verse 3. Psalm 58, verse 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. 
they go go astray as soon as they be born. Speaking lies. It's telling us that when you arrive in this world, and when Abel arrived in this world, he arrived with something in the heart. He arrived with sin in the heart. Have you noticed that little girl? Have you noticed that little boy? Nobody teaches anybody how to tell a lie. Nobody teaches how to pretend. Nobody teaches how to be hypocritical. There is no cause of studies for disobedience. Because astray as soon as they are born. As soon as Abel was born, as soon as you were born, you went astray. And you say he came from the womb. And you were telling lies. Look at Isaiah chapter 48. I'm reading here from verse 8. Isaiah chapter 48 verse 8. Yea, thou had is not ye, thou knewest not ye, from the time that thine ears was not open, for I knew that thou wouldest deal very treacherously, and was